Swagged out, familiar, we bringing up gas out. I still got some racks stuffed in the trap house. Off the 42, I'm blowing her back out. I'm back out. Bullshit, been back with a full clip. They say I. So today, we're going to be looking at some Reddit posts. Because, you know, I've been described as an asshole a couple times. A lot of times. And so, like, who better to judge if somebody's an asshole than, like, the best asshole, okay? And, like, I don't know. I feel like this is a good opportunity to just, like, tell y'all how, like, I think. Like, how I think about things. Because, like, my tolerance for stupid shit is, like, zero. And, like, I don't really feel bad for people a lot because a lot of their issues are self-inflicted. So yeah let's honestly it took me like an hour to try to find some because I, the the subreddit was kind of dry like all of the stories was kind of ass so maybe i'll do this again in the future when y'all got some better shit because i don't know if it's just not a lot of assholes going on or like y'all problems is just really dumb because like it was shit like am i the asshole because my roommate wants to kick out the cat like who cares the fuck your roommate keep the cat anyway <laughs> um so we're just gonna get right into it i picked five that i felt like were decent i want some more juicy ones so if y'all got some juicy ones send me some juicy ones anyway first up i'm gonna probably put it here let me let me scoot over for y'all we're gonna put it here so y'all can see if y'all want to read Am I the asshole for getting upset with a lady for taking photos in the gym locker room? I mean, basically the title, but now the lady is calling me out as a Karen online. But here are the details from my perspective. I got out of the shower and went back to my locker to change. I'm in a towel. There's women taking pictures. There's a woman taking pictures of herself near my locker and a couple of mirrors. I asked her to stop a few times, but she can't hear until I raise my voice. Headphones. At this point, I'm upset and I'm certain she felt attacked, but instead of stopping and saying sorry, she shoves her phone in my face. Said, wait, <laughs> instead of stopping and saying sorry, she shoves her phone in my face, says they aren't of me and continues to take pictures. Now I'm even more uncomfortable and almost crying. I'm in a locker room in a towel trying to change and she's taking pictures. Manager happens to walk in, so I tell her what's going on, and the lady and I get into it again. I was not cool and calm, I will admit. I will admit that, but neither was she. Gym managers were awesome and are filing an incident report to have her membership revoked. But I found her online, and she's calling me a Karen, am I? Well, two things here. <laughs> two major things here. Um, Yeah, you are Karen. And if she's showing you, well, when she says she shoves her phone in my face and says they aren't of me, I'm assuming you mean she showed you that you aren't in the photos. And if that's the case, then mind your business. Like, <laughs> she's in the mirror taking pictures. And if you aren't in the photo, her taking pictures should not bother you. You're in a towel changing, so finish changing especially after she let you know that you were not in her photos um what the fuck were you crying for <laughs> like i don't understand that and i'm assuming this person is because every time i've had an incident like well i've never had an incident in, with a karen but like in high school i had an incident and it was always somebody in somebody else's motherfucking business that they shouldn't have been in a business and then they want to cry I might tell y'all the story about that in another video. But like, why the fuck were you crying? If she said they weren't of you. And also, it depends on how you said it. Because a lot of the time, I want to see the video. I want to see the video, okay? Because a lot of the time, the way these women approach situations that they don't like, are very it's very rude and condescending and... I'm not one of those people you can talk to any kind of way. And I'm guessing that that girl is too. Um, if she was taking pictures and you weren't in the fucking photo, mind your business. Like, that's all I got to say. Having her membership revoked and doing all that extra shit just because you got your feelings hurt is weird. Um, you lucky you didn't get beat up. 
what else there is an update at the bottom we're gonna read it <clears throat> Update. Thank you so much for the feedback. To the few of you that had constructive criticism, I agree. I could have handled it differently, but it's hard to stay calm and rational when you're in a towel and someone is holding a camera. You could have just finished getting dressed and minded your business. Crazy thought, I know. The only reason I found her on Insta was to make sure she didn't post any photos of me. I now have someone else watching her account just in case, and it clearly wasn't healthy for me to watch her myself. I haven't received confirmation that from the gym that her membership was revoked yet, so until I do, I won't be going back. But the managers at Export have been awesome so far, and I'm hopeful, I'm hopeful I'll hear something soon. I just don't trust the chick not to take photos. Doing too motherfucking much. Because why would... Just because you got upset... Because you didn't mind your business. You want her membership revoked? And you have the audacity to ask if you're a Karen? I won't be going back. Don't go back. Because clearly you have a fucking problem. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. That was just too, too damn much. Too damn much. Hold on, y'all. Okay, I'm back. Um, yeah, obviously, you don't need to go anywhere in public because people are going to have cameras. And if you're going to get upset and cry and try to get their membership revoked because you're upset, you feel like you these white ladies is too entitled. Okay, Karen to the 50th degree. Next. Next. <laughs> okay. This one is kind of long, but we're going to get through it. Okay. Am I the asshole for being mean and hostile at my first and only time at a support group? My five-year-old started kindergarten last year, and his teacher recommended that he get screened for a learning disability. The specialist diagnosed him with ASD, and he has, and he has a 504 plan. The specialist also recommended a support group for the mothers, but not fathers, which I found weird, and said it would be really helpful for me because I'd be able to benefit from the experience of other moms. He gave me the information for a local group he said he knew several members of. I did go yesterday. I left my son with my husband because I wasn't sure what to expect. I showed up and saw a few mothers and children. Right away, I noticed that several were not engaged with, the, with their children at all and had them sat in a corner with tablets. They are very welcoming to me at first and invited me to sit with them. I intended to keep quiet and listen because it was my first time. The other mothers were either eager to talk to me and explain the roadmap to me. They, they said some things that shocked me, including several hurtful, th hurtful things about their children that were in earshot. <clears throat> One mother said... <coughs> excuse me. One mother said... There will be days when you absolutely hate your child and then looked over at her son. They also said, be prepared for your husband to mostly or completely disengage. A few of them told me they were divorced and blamed their small children for being the cause. My shock and I admit disgust must have been all over my face. One of them asked me if I was overwhelmed and I should have kept quiet, but I couldn't. I said I thought it was really gross of them to blame all their problems on their kids. If their husbands were deadbeats, that wasn't the kid's fault. Hating your children isn't normal, and it's a sign of something wrong with the parent, not the child. They got cold and said a year from now, you'll, you'll be embarrassed about how arrogant you were. Things will only get harder, and realize it, and you'll realize what an ass you're being. I left because I knew there was no point in staying. I also decided that I didn't want to see the specialist anymore. When I called to cancel my follow-up, he asked why. I said I was going to find another specialist because he recommended me a toxic group. He said the group was for venting, sex, venting sessions, not medical advice, and explained it was supposed to be a form of stress relief. Um, I just canceled and decided not to argue further. Part of me thinks I was the asshole to these women, that I gave them the same lack of empathy I saw them give their kids. Another part of me is completely freaked out. Was I an ass to those mothers? Um, honestly, I think both parties in this situation were asses um 
that's not the first time that I've heard someone say sometimes you'll hate your kids. Obviously, they don't mean that literally. Um, it's a normal feeling to be frustrated with parenthood and to be overwhelmed, especially with a child with a disability. So I don't think they were being literal. Um, aside from, I don't think they were blaming their kids for their marriage failing, but if we're being honest, children and changes in a relationship, especially with a disabled child, does affect a relationship and does take more um, attention from both parents. So that could have put a strain on the relationship and something being a cause of something else doesn't make it the fault. So I think she was being, this mother was being a little bit too reactive to these other mothers even with even though what they were saying and the way that they worded it they were venting their feelings and I don't think they were literally hating their children or else they wouldn't be you know doing the best that they could for their kids they can only you know share from their perspective and you know share from the position that they're at and if they're frustrated they're frustrated they vent you know and so I just don't think it was that deep obviously they love their kids and they're willing to go to lengths to take care of them and um I don't know if I don't I don't understand the first part <laughs> like oh they sat them in a corner with their tablets obviously if they have to take care of their kids the the support group isn't for the kids it's for the parents so if they don't have anybody to watch watch their kids at the time yeah the kids are gonna need to go entertain themselves somewhere so that wasn't really that wasn't a read <laughs> um I just don't think I don't think it was that deep if the parent and they're right if the husband is a deadbeat it's not the child's fault but the child did help reveal that this person is a deadbeat so like I said it doesn't mean it's the fault of the child but it does add to it helps the story progress okay you learn that your man ain't shit because you had a child and they weren't willing to take care of them. So, you know, there's that. And I hate the word projecting because people use it wrong. But when they were like, oh, be prepared for your husband to completely disengage, they were projecting because that happened to them. And they were letting you know that this is a possibility, you know, if you believe it's a possibility. But that's a whole nother topic. Um, Yeah, I just, I think the whole way that this lady reacted was a little weird <laughs> it was a little weird but also the way that they were speaking about the kid it, it's normal it is normal because i've heard people say like sometimes you hate your kid but not literally like not literally people be like oh my god i hate my mom and dad not literally <laughs> it's not literal it's just the frustration and that's how it comes out so yeah, I I think it was the lack of empathy and we just express our feelings differently. So, yeah, I understand. I I wouldn't want to go back either because I guess the the doctor or whoever should have been like, "Yeah, it's preventing and it's not whatever." But you know, you live and you learn. Next one. Okay. Am I the asshole for telling my sister she's better off being infertile? Okay. Despite have despite trying to conceive for years and having no success with her husband, every month my sister, 31 female, felt like a supreme disappointment. Her head knew she was not at fault, but she was saying that not being able to give her husband the gift of a child the gift of children, which is seen to most people as a wifely duty, made her feel broken and not whole. Finally, she consulted her doctor only to be diagnosed with endometriosis. Damn. A simple surgery which was scheduled for last week was supposed to correct the problem. She was ecstatic, only to come out of Anastasia and be told by the doctor that, she's so that he is sorry, but children would not be an option. As you can imagine, she felt devastated by th these news. Yesterday, I went to visit her to try to lift her spirits. I told her how incredibly sorry I was, but then I also added that being infertile may not be all that bad. Raising kids isn't all sunshine and roses. There is added stress, expenses, sleep dep deprivation, and time commitment. I told her to look at all the unhappy couples with kids and that at least her husband, her and her husband 
would enjoy some extra freedom. After these com comments, my sister sadness turned into anger. She started shouting at me and told me to leave her house. She was she had also informed our mother because she called me later to tell me that my comments were disgusting and I should feel ashamed of myself. I feel like me trying to help my sister only made the situation worse. Okay. I feel like, yeah, you were the asshole, but not intentionally. Not, I wouldn't say you're an asshole, but a little bit tone deaf. <laughs> As somebody who has dealt with issues in the uh uteral region there's things that you just don't say and a lot of these diseases not diseases but you know health conditions they do tell a lot of women that you might not be able to have children or it won't be an option or that's extremely difficult but there's a period at least for me in my experience there's a period where you hear that and you feel like your world is over but then you do a little bit of research and you read stories about people that have had success with this condition and are able to have kids and that there's ways around it to be able to carry a child and to become more fertile etc cetera, etc cetera. so for you to basically accept that for her instead of letting her get to the point where she could find an alternative it's kind of it's kind of rude because nobody first of all anybody that wants kids knows that kids is not easy a lot of people that want kids have either grew, grown up with kids or spent a lot of time around children we know that kids is not easy we know that having children is not a cakewalk and that there is a lot of responsibility and a lot of things to do we know that that's all well and good but when that option is seemingly stripped away from you the last thing you want to hear is that maybe you're better off because it's like no like i wanted to find out myself i wanted to experience this with the person that i love and it's just <laughs> she did she didn't ask for that she didn't ask for that you know and you only experience what you believe so if you saying that contradicted what she was believing in that moment like maybe even though she was upset maybe there is or was a glimmer of hope for her that she could have a child eventually one day who knows miracles happen every day um I would have been frustrated too because nobody wants to hear that especially somebody that has been trying for years to have children nobody wants to hear that so I just think it was a poor choice of words and not necessarily you intentionally being an asshole all right number what is this number three number four let me see where we at okay yeah <laughs> number three <laughs> am i the asshole for getting for getting up and lining up to exit the airplane before the people in front of me got up <laughs> 